funny. Hello, everybody. Ben Rogers here. The Raptors died just reacting. The Toronto Raptors 125 to 89 win, Riker. The largest margin of victory in a Raptors playoff game in Raptors history. This this was just fascinating. To Probably watch. the the funnest game as a Raptors fan ever in history to witness mm -hmm. live time. Really amazing. And Ben, there's going to be a lot of really good things to talk about. Before we even get into the comment of the day, just mm -hmm. this brief conversation I want to have. We're going to talk about a lot of things that, like I said, that if you were watching this game, they're pretty obvious positive takeaways. But the one thing I feel like people might not be talking about, might not recognize, tonight I watched the TNT stream. I wasn't watching the Sportsnet or the TSN. I was watching the American media. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in my life that I can remember, there was nothing negative said about the Toronto Raptors the whole game. It was two, it was the American broadcasting and they had all positive things it was crazy to watch I i've never experienced that before yeah no this was this game was exactly what we you know were hoping for as toronto raptors fans coming into it you know the toronto raptors no one really played out of their minds no one played uh, above their usual level right but everyone did their job everyone fulfilled their role did what they needed to do and you know, it ended up in this this product of uh, such a massive victory. I believe it was you know a thirty six or something point deficit. Yeah. This this is just and it ridiculous, felt like more. right? No, it felt like more than thirty six. Yeah, it felt exactly. And this is the biggest win in Raptors history in terms of you know scoring. And it, it's it didn't even need a forty point performance from Kawhi Leonard. We didn't even need inhuman performances from Pascal Siakam, Gasol, Lowry, Green. You know, everyone played solid. Everyone played, did what they needed to do, and. This is what this team can do when the role players step up. I made a video just uh, just yesterday about how Kawhi Leonard needed help and how the role players just need to be role players, not be trash. And no one was trash tonight that came out on the court. And I, I was just yeah. so happy to see the Raptors do and this. And to my point, just to get that recognition from the American media, who we've had such a struggle with our entire time as podcast hosts, it's pretty cool. But mm. before we really get into the, the whole analysis and yeah. the commentary here about the game, obviously, like I said, a lot to break down here and everything is going to be positive. Uh, the comment of the day, eh? We got two. Quick one from Peter Aziz. I hear you. He's saying, can you start off the podcast just saying where you guys are from? Both Newfoundland, East Coast boys, but we both live in, on yeah. well, me in Ontario, Ben in Quebec and Montreal. Um, and I feel like that'll be our place now for the next few years. Um, maybe so, maybe mm. not. I'm not sure. So that's where we're posted right now. And then the real comment of the day, Fortnite Connoisseur, he said, I like the lineup with he... <laughs> I like the lineup with Lowry, Kawhi, Siakam, Ibaka, and Gasol. And this is the point I want to start with tonight, Ben. Nick Nurse, he figured it out. And I think that that lineup actually was really nice. And they had... He figured out how you can play Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet and Lowry at the same yep. time with the three bigs. And that was like a very mm -hmm. good lineup to have out there. W what did you see tonight from Nick Nurse's lineups? Because 76ers had zero answer to anything. Well, as the you know what happened in Game Four when Nick Nurse went big, and you know we've been skeptical of this big big lineup that Nick Nurse has sometimes thrown out during the regular season, but you know he threw it out for a reason, just so they gained some familiarity. It might be a matchup that that could work against some teams, and the fact that the Philadelphia 76ers are so big, you know with Joel Embiid, even Jimmy Butler's a bigger guard, Tobias Harris, Ben Simmons, the point, JJ Redick, they're a big starting lineup, and the Raptors match that bigness, and they can bully them inside. They can get the rebound. They aren't affected by the Sixers' strong offensive rebounding. And then, you know, as you mentioned, it allows for Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet to be able to be the smaller guards and not worry about being, you know, bullied down low because there, there'll be big help from behind. And then they can focus on pick and rolls, giving the ball in the lane, and attacking the rim. And that's one thing, you know, the Raptors hit a lot of threes tonight, but everything was initiated through inside out. You know, the ball would be kicked into Kawhi in the mid post, it would be kicked to Siakam, who would drive, and then it would just be dished out to Siakam or Marcus. Saul, Danny Green, Kyle Lowry, and everyone was knocking down their open shots tonight. And this is what we come to expect from the Raptors throughout this whole season. You know, we don't need ridiculous shooting percentages, but hit the open ones. This is why the Raptors, you know, the, the I believe their corner three percentages coming into tonight for the playoffs or in this series was about around 21%. And, you know, in the regular season, it was around 40. That's that's half of what we're usually getting. So but I, I expected the Raptors to knock down more of those open looks. And tonight, the Sixers were giving them to us and the Raptors were knocking them down and making them pay yeah and ben it was mentioned also during the game uh or i guess towards the end they were saying 
Everybody in the starting lineup shot above what their playoff averages are. Kawhi Leonard obviously significantly mm-hmm. lower in tonight's game, even though he could have turned yeah. it on. In the first half, that's what mm-hmm. allowed the rest of the players to get into it was the pressure that was put on him, especially this game. But in the second half, I mean, he barely played at all and barely had to try. Um, but do you like what you saw tonight? Because really, they everybody else responded. You made the podcast yesterday criticizing basically everybody out there saying someone needs to step up and instead of one person stepping up which Pascal Siakam returned to form everybody yeah. stepped up even the bench played pretty well tonight yeah see I'm not asking a lot from this Toronto Raptors help players we don't need them to be out of this world like we've kind of asked some players in the past to do you know last year we expected a rookie OG Ananobi to be clamp LeBron and get us 15 points per game in the playoff season and that just wasn't realistic you know we'd ask Damari Carroll Patrick Patterson to be third and fourth options on a playoff basketball team that's that's a not realistic thing to ask but to, to, to require Danny Green to knock down open threes when he's a playoff tested veteran that's one of the best three-point shooters in the league I think that's a fair request you know something something that's good Marcus Gasol to be at least a aggressive you know look for his jumper more look for his jumper look for his post hooks look for something throughout stretches of the game keep him beat honest you know I think that's a fair request Kyle Lowry get you know he had 19 points tonight but get be aggressive and take he took nine shots tonight be efficient get around you know under 20 points but facilitate all these things we just want players to play to their level you know not nothing above but just to their level and tonight everyone did it and we just smoked a team with four all-star striker right if we you know we don't necessarily need everyone to be on night by night but if we do then I think we're going to be unstoppable but we didn't need a big game out of Kawhi and as you mentioned Kawhi could have been even better so just I I love to see Kawhi get some help and we, we there's been a joke about how the Raptors look like the Cavs of past seasons and you know when LeBron James is just carrying garbage to the to the finals every year but you know tonight this is what a Toronto ba- Raptors basketball team absolutely look now like. Ben tonight Joel Embiid was absolutely dismal. Him and Ben Simmons combined had, I I believe, they might have had as many turnovers as the entire Toronto Raptors team. If you have the box score, maybe you can check that Mm -hmm. while I'm uh, just... Yeah, eight turnovers from Embiid, five turnovers from Simmons, so they both, you know, they combined for 13 turnovers. And how many did the Raptors have? The Raptors won four, six... 10. Yep, so Embiid and Simmons out had three more turnovers in the whole Toronto Raptors. Right, so terrible, and... Joel Embiid, whether he's sick, whether he's not, he's bringing down the rest of the team. Clearly, his demeanor is absolutely terrible. But it's surprising to me that the guys like Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris, that they, you know, J.J. Redick played awful tonight. Um, Tell me about next game now, because obviously every game has been so different in this series, in this matchup so far. Mm -hmm. Game one of the series started like this, a huge blowout, and everybody said, that's it, the Raptors are going to sweep this. Then... Mm-hmm. The 76ers respond in a big way, come back. Then everybody says, oh, the Raptors are done now. The 76ers are surefire going to move on. Fourth game, now that's a, you know, we're, but now after this one, now the, everybody's saying, okay, the Raptors are the guaranteed guys again. But really, we've shown, it's been shown anything could happen. What do you expect to see from the game now in, the, in Philadelphia, in the place with, you know, very aggressive fans and a team that has something to prove in an elimination game? Well, I certainly expect it to be closer. I don't see J.J. Redick having another game like this, especially on his home court, because J.J. Redick is a guy that feeds off the fans, feeds off the energy. Jimmy Butler's going to do his thing. He's done his thing the whole series, so he's a guy that I think will stay consistent. But, yeah, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, they're two younger guys, you can say, but, you know, they feed off the energy of their home court. They, they're like a team that... You know, when they're when their backs against the wall, they're gonna start fighting and pushing. So I think we're gonna deal take a haymaker at the beginning of the the next game. But if the Toronto Raptors continue to play like this, you know, Kawhi Leonard, I think we'll need a bigger game from him in Philadelphia. But if the rest of the roster can just maintain what they've done, even if they regress a little bit, but still are threats. If we just need people to not play garbage, I think the Toronto Raptors can handle the Sixers. But you know, the thing about home court in the in the NBA, your superstars usually play well no matter where they are. And we saw this with Kawhi Leonard on the Raptors. Siakam's been pretty consistent throughout the postseason, you know, despite injuries. And, you know, the same thing with the Sixers. Uh, jo- uh, Jimmy Butler's been pretty solid in either court. He's their only real consistent star with Joel Embiid being unhealthy and sick. So he's been pretty consistent, but it's the role players that usually step up on their home court. And Tobias Harris, I know he's more than a role player, but I, I see him being a bit stronger at home. J.J. Redick, as I mentioned, he'll be better. And the player that really struggled tonight that's given the-, given the Raptors a huge headache 
like in the series is James Ennis. You know, James Ennis was at minus 30 for the game. The people have been, you know, there's a meme that James Ennis is looking at Michael Jordan going throughout this series because he's been outscoring the Toronto Raptors bench himself, but he only had one point. He had four fouls. He couldn't defend anybody. 0% from the field, 0 of 3 from the three point line. You know, he, he had a very poor game. So I see him being stronger on this home court, but still, I, I think if the Raptors play like this and we come out with energy and fired up, I still think we'll get the W. You know, I predicted at the beginning of this series, I predicted Raptors in seven. I thought that this was going to be well fought, but wouldn't it be lovely if the Raptors could go out there and continue to play, like you said, not even at the same level, but up to the way that they were playing this game, maybe get a 10-point win, a 15-point win, and just move on the series. Put the 76ers yep. behind them and get ready for the next matchup. That would be... That would be a blessing, and I think that it's capable. If the guys, like you said, if they stay confident, and if Kawhi Leonard, he, you know, scores more points next game, I can definitely see it being possible. But we might as well go into the segments, and we can swing back to anything else we want to after, because there was a lot of fun individual plays that happened this game, and I'm sure that there's going to be some really, uh, you know, spirited things that we can talk about here now. Well, certainly. Firstly, first off, the, the Kawhi doing like that play of the day. And Riker, I, I think everyone knows what play this is going to. There's a couple, actually, from Kawhi tonight. He's had some Superman-like dunks. He came down the lane and post rise and beat it twice. Twice in this game. One at the end of the first half came down. Just in, in, I think the whole Sixers team was guarding him, and he just wouldn't be stopped. He rose up, threw one down to end the half. And then another one was I th- was in the third quarter, Riker, where Embiid was just in help side. Well, didn't show up early enough, and Kawhi Leonard's got some sneaky ups, man. He's a he's such a big, strong player. When he throws it down, he he embarrasses whoever's underneath yeah, the rim. Yeah, it was amazing. And there was, a, there was more plays than that. Pascal Siakam, Norman Powell, there was... A, basically a dunk party that was happening consistently throughout the game Mm. so um, I would say definitely Kawhi's poster over Joel Embiid one of the most prolific blockers and one of the biggest of the big men he truly is deserving of that title big uh, just to look minuscule against Kawhi Leonard's the size of his hands his ups like you said crazy man absolutely insane yeah and you brought up the the Siakam the Siakam dunk as well. That Gasol threw a wicked outlet pass to him. Siakam running the floor tonight. You know he had that poor game in Game Three. He's been very very strong in these playoffs with the Toronto Raptors tonight. Twenty five points, eight rebounds from Siakam, three assists, two steals, a block, a plus thirty five of the game. Got to got to give a shout out to well, Pascal Siakam. Well, this is why Siakam I discredit. This is why I, like well, not discredit, but I'm not giving as much empathy towards Joel Embiid being injured for as long as he has been because Pascal Siakam yeah. was also a, a legitimate injury listed as doubtful has a bad game and responds in such a way right he, he's able to carry himself as mm-hmm. more of a professional and pascal siakam it's crazy the consistency that he's been able to have throughout this playoffs and throughout the season certainly pascal siakam certainly most improved player he's playing like a superstar but not all plays can be the kawaii doom like that play of the day and some just make you say oh geez and tonight the oh geez for me Riker, you know Kawhi had a had some wicked dunks but you know he he did have a have an oh geez moment tonight Serge Ibaka gets subbed into the game and you know they're going for a rebound and Kawhi accidentally well we think it's accidentally takes out Serge's head there's a conspiracy theory that it might be a might be revenge for what uh what Serge Ibaka did to Kawhi Leonard on the how hungry are you episode but he he took out. He ended up elbowing Serge in the head. He, there, was, there was blood everywhere. He had this giant lump on his head for the rest of the game. But you know, people people were talking like this bandage is what Serge needed to kind of wake up in the series. It was it was his power up move because he had ten points for uh, th- four two rebounds. Sorry, and just, but just played a very strong game defensively. Resiliency. Just I was really happy with how Serge played. But certainly Kawhi elbowing him in the head was an was an OG. Yeah, and the size of the you're right. The size of that bulb or the horn or the goose egg that was growing it was basically like a, a you know another Serge Ibaka there but a crazy amount of blood yeah. was drawn and you're right maybe the bandage was just containing all the you know dumb IQ plays and bad uh, possessions that Serge Ibaka usually has been putting out in the in the past games and this one he played fantastic I thought his shot selection was amazing and his defense was really mm-hmm. good against the uh, Joel Embiid and the different guys that he was tasked with guarding even some switches he played really well yeah, the, the box score, it says he has no blocks, but I'm pretty sure he had a lot of deflection, some great defensive plays, so I, I was really happy with how Serge played. He had that energy, and it was what we needed off the bench from our backup bigs, but, you know, the 
the bench when the bench plays well the raptors rarely lose and tonight even fred came in he had a he knocked down a three didn't play horrible you know i made the point that fred should probably be knocked out of the series and i, I still don't see fred thriving against the sixers despite the fact he had you know he only had five points tonight he wasn't able to get much going but you know it was nice to see him not be completely shut down by philadelphia yeah i mean just the run at the end with the other bench guys of course they were playing against the absolute scrubs but i still would it would have been nice to see Mm -hmm. mccaw get some run during the game but it looks like you know nick nurse will probably end up repeating this lineup which is unfortunate because 76ers are going to adjust but it's hard as a team that just won by 40 points to see you know how, how how can we adjust to whatever their adjustment will be when we really just won without any hitches um so i could see that being a challenge but the new segment the don't trust the process moment very easily for me you missed it in the game i'm sure others uh saw it greg monroe he gets a a screen set for him and gets a wide open corner three he's not really much of a three-point shooter at, at, the, at first, Danny Green tries to fight over the screen, then realizes who it is posted up there outside the perimeter and just stands up straight. He just is giving him time, uh, second passes, two second passes. Pascal Siakam walks over, another second or two passes. Nothing's happening, so Greg Monroe hoists it up, bricks as hard a shot I've ever seen in my life, it gets benched. Um, that is a don't trust the process moment for sure. And we can even continue on to the Damari Carroll Gold Star Award for worst performance of the night. Usually that's reserved for Jeremy Lin whenever he steps foot in a playoff match. But he even played well tonight. So, Ben, for me, there's no Damari Carroll. I don't know about you. Yeah, no Damari Carroll for, for the Raptors side. If you had to give it out for the game, certainly I'd have to give it to James Ennis for just the regression that he took or even Embiid for... You know, the whole Sixers kind of starting unit, it was, they they didn't play well. J.J. Redick, who's been a killer in the series, didn't play that well. So the Raptors, they, they you can't give, you can't bring any negatives into this game for the Toronto Raptors. Everyone played well. It was, a, it was just an all-around dominant performance. But you brought up Greg Monroe. You know, I, the one thing I noticed about this team, the deep bench on the Philadelphia 76ers, they got Moose, a guy that I, I really enjoyed in his time in Toronto, but Amir Johnson. I saw I got I got flashbacks of the the original Toronto Raptors group the the young guns if people remember that that era in Toronto Raptors basketball and seeing Amir he almost took a summer three he had a he had a post up where he shot that classic Amir Johnson just throw it up their hook and it always goes in it, I miss Amir I miss Amir I wish Amir was on our deep bench for this playoff run and, you know if we if we do obviously there's a lot of winning that has to happen but if we make the finals I'm I'm going to be sad that guys like Amir and Jose, I would like them to be on the, the deep bench of this roster instead of, you know, some of the newer guys that don't get much run. Well, Eric Moreland held his own. Um, I'm good. Yeah. I'm glad that we... Uh, Just for the culture. Just yeah, for the for culture. Sure. I'm glad that we, we finish or we're getting, we're winding down on this tone. I've been so excited all podcast. Uh, I should have turned the game down even more. I've been blowing out the mic, so I apologize to <laughs> anybody if my audio is all wacky. Normally I have it down to minus one but it should be down way more i've been screaming at the mic out of positivity ben it's not often that that happens and you know what this Mm -hmm. is really cool i i think that the raptors could definitely do it now moving forward um on the road i think it's a very hostile crowd you said it yourself the team is going to play better the 76ers all their guys are going to step up don't expect Mm -hmm. jj reddick to go out and be as slow as he was jimmy butler is going to try to pick it up to another level and joel Embiid, maybe he's going to finally stop being a uh, what's a non-explicitive that you can use here? A whiny, a whiny person, and uh, you know, elevate <laughs> his game and be more aggressive. Because for the most part, he's shooting at a higher level, and so is Ben Simmons. They're just not getting shots up, and the defense has been absolutely stifling. But it should be a hard-fought matchup. I think the Raptors could still do it on the road if they play well. Yep, yeah, certainly. You know, the this this is just such a euphoric experience as a Toronto Raptors fan to see such a dominant postseason win. I don't know if the Raptors throughout their whole stretch ever had these games where they completely blew out a good team. So we've had two of them this series. I know we've had some duds, but well, game three was only real dud. Game two was pretty hard fought. So hopefully they, they can get out the W, but you're the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. You know, we really appreciate you guys checking in. We got hopefully a long postseason run going. You know, with the Raptors continue to play like this, I think that will hold true. Riker, any last words? That's it for me. Cheers.